Hey everyone, welcome back to the fish room. Today we're going to have a look at the red devil cichlid, an amphilophus species with a lot of personality. This is my breeding pair here. I've had uh, both fish for about a year and two years respectively. The male's about probably 12 inches, maybe a little bit more, and the female's around 7 inches in length. I just recently put them together and this is their first spawn. I'm keeping them in 80 degree water. It's around 7 pH and the tank that they're in at the moment is a 90 gallon. 48 by 18 by 24. So that tank will do for now but at any moment in time, I may need to separate these fish because of the aggression amongst the two. The male will likely pick on the female at some point, and in that case, I've got another tank ready for her. Ideally, in a six-foot tank with some dithers, these two would probably get along long-term. They reach maturity around uh, four to six inches or about one to two years of age, depending on uh, their growth rate and how they're cared for in that first year. They can reach it out in as short as one year. They breed in large spawns, like fairly large, probably around a thousand fry for this pair here. I've had a larger female, and she was even had larger spawns. It's cool to watch. Uh, the female was laying the eggs. I caught almost every step of the way here. The female lays them, and then the male comes over and fertilizes them. They covered that PVC pipe. Now I put that PVC pipe in there as a bit of a trial run because I knew the female could fit in and the male couldn't. So it actually worked out pretty well. I was a bit worried for the first two weeks the female only hid in the PVC. She didn't really interact with the male and she didn't come out. Aside from the odd time she'd poke her head out to eat. Now, as I mentioned before, these fish are highly aggressive. Uh, with the male here, Big Papa, if I put my hand in the tank, he'll bite it. And he's got enough teeth and enough force that he'll even draw blood. So it's not something I try and do on the regular, that's for sure. When it comes to caring for the fry, they do a pretty good job of raising them up themselves. What I like to make sure I do is make sure the fry, once they're free swimming and they've consumed their yolk sac, which is probably about day five, I like to make sure that they get a lot of food available to them. So you can see here on the PVC pipe, there's actually some algae and stuff. And I leave that there on purpose because you'll see later in the video, the fry can graze on that. I also offer them baby brine shrimp, freshly hatched, or crushed flake, depending on the species. With these red devils, they pretty well do well on the crushed flake. The fry are large enough when they hatch that they can take it. So anything else isn't really necessary. When the fish are in a large tank like this, it sometimes can be hard to feed the fry. So what I use is I crush the flake in a cup. I use a little tank water in there to make a bit of a solution with water and crushed flake. And then I suck it up with a turkey baster and I squeeze it into the tank directed at the cloud of fry. That way the swarm doesn't have to go too far to find the food and they start eating right away. 
You can leave the fry in with the parents or remove them, depending on your pair. Uh, when you leave them in, there, you always run the risk of the parents eating them. With this spawn, particularly what I did was, when they went free swimming, I netted out a, a net full, and I put them in a 10-gallon tank, and I left the rest in with them. So far, both groups of fry are doing well. The ones that have been left in the original tank seem to be growing a little bit faster than the ones that I removed and put in a 10-gallon tank. Now that could have something to do with the water quality in a 90 is a little bit more consistent and fluctuates less than in a 10-gallon, or just the fact that they're in the same water that they were born in. All in all, the red devil is a really fun species of fish to keep. The first year is always the easy part because they're still maturing and they're young and they're not uh, that big of a terror in the tank, but after that, they become a little bit high maintenance. My recommendation would be to have a few uh, options available as far as a spare tank, an egg crate divider, and things like that for in the event of uh, anything to go wrong because it will eventually, like, they are big cichlids and they will fight and when they do fight, they do damage to each other. So you want to be ready for all that, but when you are ready and prepared for a fish like this, they are very rewarding. Uh, nothing beats the personality that uh, ha that Big Papa has. Like I come up to the tank, I tap on it, he comes at me, bites my finger as you can see. Even the female, when there's a spawn, she'll get in there. So it's really cool to have fish that interest. All right, well that's enough of me talking. I'm going to leave you guys with some footage of the pair and their fry. Uh, just to, in case you wanted to check out a little bit uh, how they interacted. What I did was I set up the camera and I left the room. wanted to see how they took care of the fry when nobody was around. It's kind of cool. And if you stick around to the end, there's some cool uh, footage of the female directing the, the fry after I just turned the lights on. They, For some reason, I guess... When the fish go to sleep, they all go to the bottom of the tank. But when the fry go to sleep, they all go into a little ball and a swarm almost really tightly packed. And the female sleeps on top of them, it looks like. So I got some footage of that when I t first turned on the lights and how they uh, kind of wake up. So it was pretty cool. Thanks again for watching and stay tuned for the next one.